Welcome to Boulderton Methodist Church Online. It's lovely to have you with us this morning. My name's Rachel, I'm one of the local preachers. I'd like to begin with some words from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirits depart, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those who help, whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. We're going to begin with number 430 from Seeing the Faith. My lips shall praise you, my great Redeemer. In 
the midst of trouble you draw near. You are the restorer of my soul. Let us pray, a prayer of praise and a prayer of confession. Gracious God, Lord of light, shining on the world, we join our voices in praise to you. In Jesus Christ, your glory has risen on us. Our light has come so we can learn and grow. We can sing, we can celebrate. We can pray, we can listen again and be healed from sorrow and anxiety, our joy made full. Christ our light shines on our lives, our faith is brighter and our understanding clearer. We gather to praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God of forgiveness. You never forget us, but we often forget you. We place before you the times we have gone our own way and forgotten your love. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and heal us. We place before you the times we have overeaten and forgotten the hunger of others. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and healers. We place before you the times we have spent beyond our means and forgotten the poverty of others. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and healers. We place before you the times we have been idle and forgotten the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and heal us. Help us to remember you and remember our neighbours, the people you have given us to love, for the sake of your Son who died for us. Amen. There once was a man 
who was searching for true happiness. So he began to think of the things that would make him happy. He decided to build a house. For sure he would be happy with a brand new house. We've got a brand new house. He was happy for a while, but then he began to get bored and thought, what I really need is a sailboat. So he got himself a sailboat. He sailed all around Lake Windermere and then around the coast of Britain and then the world. And he saw lots of interesting things. But again, he began to get bored. One day, he saw a jet aeroplane fly over. So, of course, he got himself an aeroplane. He flew from one country to, from country to country but he still couldn't find the peace and happiness that he was looking for. He sat down one day and thought, and thought about it really hard and finally decided that the best place for him to go would be out of, sp out of space. Surely he could find happiness there. So he got himself a rocket. He flew off into the sky and flew right round the moon and yet he still could not find happiness and the peace he longed for. Finally, he came home and when he got there, he met a man who seemed to have the peace and happiness he was looking for. So he asked the man, how can I find peace and happiness? I have a house, a sailboat, an aeroplane, and even a rocket ship, but I'm still not happy. Where can I find what I'm looking for? The man smiled and said, Until you find Jesus and ask him to rule over you and guide and lead you each day, you will never find true joy or peace or happiness. We continue our worship with from Singing the Faith, number 372. Come down. O oh, love divine.
Our Bible reading this morning is from Luke chapter 16, reading verses 19 to 31. There was a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen, linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in a like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm that has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from here to us. He said, then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, then they will repent. He said to him, If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Amen. We sing again from Singing the Faith, number 254. Seek ye first the kingdom of God.
think of the story of Lazarus and the rich man for a moment. Lazarus, a poor beggar, ends up in heaven while the rich man ends up in hell. And you know, what it all seems to come down to is that the rich man failed to share even the crumbs that fell from his table with the beggar who lay at his gate. He failed to have compassion for his neighbour. The law and the prophets tell us, feed the hungry, look after the widow and the orphan, do justice for the alien and the stranger in your land. Take care of those who are suffering. Love God and love your neighbour as yourself. And is this heard by the rich man? He probably thought so, but for some reason or a, a, another, the beggar at his gates did not seem to him worthy of his attention worthy even of the leftovers of his feast. There is a story told about a Texan who, after a lifetime of frustrated striving, finally struck, in, struck it rich in oil. The first thing he did was go to Dallas and buy himself his dream outfit of boots, spurs and a ten-gallon hat and all the trimmings, including a massive Cadillac with a set of Texas Longhorns mounted on the front. No sooner had he arrived home, however, that he had a heart attack and died. His wife, conscious of his newfound pride and joy, decided that the only appropriate thing to do was to bury him with his new finery. Accordingly, a huge concrete vault was prepared and a large crane put into place. With his hat, his boots and his new togs on, the body was placed behind the wheel of the Cadillac and as the crane lifted the car and began lowering it into the vault of one of the vault, one of the man's buddies nudged, nudged another standing close by and said, man, that's living. I'm afraid that many people think that way. They think that life is all about living affluently, about having the largest TV with a sound system that makes them feel that they are in a cinema and a four-wheel drive car and a big house, and a lavish, no expense spared funeral when the end comes. But that isn't living, that's dying. Andrew Carnegie, who amassed a fortune of over $4 million, ended up giving away 99.5%. He said this about it. The man who dies rich, dies disgraced. The Bible seems to indicate to us that not only does the rich man die disgraced, he also ends up in hell. While the very people that the rich man most likely despise, the poor beggars of our society, the welfare cases that we so often talk down upon rather than help, the millions of children in other nations who die each year for the lack of basic sanitation and a bite to eat end up in heaven. What are riches worth in the end? Riches that have not been shared. Some of us are probably thinking, this teaching of Jesus doesn't apply to me. I'm not rich. I don't have sumptuous feasts or live in a mansion, and that may be. But wealth is a relative thing, and I dare say that most of us are rich beyond measure compared to 90% of the world's population, and not doing too badly 
compared to about 40% of our own society. And what good will it do us in the end? Unless we are first rich, as Paul puts it, unless we are rich in good works, generous and ready to share, and thus have stored up for ourselves the treasures of a good foundation for the future. Some may say that this is hard teaching, and it is. But again, using the words of Paul, it is a, the way to take hold of life that is really life. Jesus, in another part of the Bible, tells us that a rich man is likely to get to heaven, is as likely to get to heaven as a camel is to get through the eye of a needle. Some interpreters of the Bible say that what Jesus was referring to in this passage was an ancient gate that went through the walls of Jerusalem into the city. This gate, they say, was so small that anyone who wanted to pass through it with his camel first had to get off the camel, then he had to unload it, then he had to have the camel kneel down and basically go through the gate by repeated crouching down and rising up movements. Others dismiss the idea of such a gate existing, but the message is clear. Whether or not this gate actually existed or not, you cannot be attached to your possessions, to your wealth, to your pride and your position and hope to enter the kingdom of God. Rather, you have to put these aside. You have to give them away and get down from your high place and in, a, in, a, and in an attitude of humility, then walk through the gate. There are many who long to satisfy their hunger with what falls from our tables. And there is a time that comes to us all when we will be reduced to equality with those people, a time of dying, a time of judgment. And while the mercy of Christ is there for all who seek it, it will not avail as much if we have not prepared ourselves, if we have not laid a good foundation for the future, a foundation based on the love of God and the love of our neighbours, all our neighbours, not just the ones we think worthy of our love. The story is told about a deacon of a church who went out one day to paint his house. He, he had obtained five gallons of white paint and began the job. As he got to the third side of the house, he noticed that he was running out of paint, so he added some turpentine to the remainder and kept on going. On the final side of the house, he noticed he was running out again, so he added a bit more turpentine and succeeded in finishing off the house. After the paint dried, he noticed that the last two south sides of the house were streaky and the whole thing looked awful, in fact. Being a religious man, he bowed his head in prayer and asked God what he should do. A voice came from heaven and said to him, Rep Repaint and thin no more. This too is the message of Christ for us. He calls us to repent and sin no more. We are called to repent of our unthought, unthought selfishness, of our lack of even the most basic care for those who don't fit our concept of who is deserving, of our tendency to judge things in such a way that we can ignore those who are outside our gates.
But where is the grace of God in all of this? It is in fact that we can indeed enter the kingdom of God, that it is God's good will for us, as Paul wrote, as for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. We must set our hope in God and build a good foundation for the future by using what God has given for our enjoyment to increase the enjoyment of others. Visit those who are sick, clothe those who are naked, feed those who are hungry, give a cup of cold water to those who thirst, and bless God's name for the fact that God has made it possible for us to show his love and his grace to those who are in such deep, deep need for it. Listen to Moses and the prophets. Their message is the same as that of the one who rose from the dead. Listen, do what they have told us to do and thereby build a good foundation for the future. Let us pray. God of love, you have made a beautiful world for us to live in. Your world is filled with all sorts of people. We have friends nearby and friends far away. We have things we can share with one another. Your love is always in our hearts and we thank you and ask you that you will teach us to care. Amen. We sing again from Singing the Faith. Number 471, Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be changed, renew, flowing from the grace that I found. as I see in me will be stripped away by the power to your 
now come to the time for our intercessory prayers. Let us pray. All our needs are God's concerns. Let us pray to him now. Father, make us a listening church, welcoming to the hesitant, encouraging to the young, sensitive to the differences and attentive to the needs. God in mercy, hear us as we pray. Father, make us a caring world, wise in government, honest in promises, far-sighted in the management of resources, and open-hearted in charitable giving. God in mercy, hear us as we pray. Father, make us a responsible community, supporting our neighbours and friends, sharing one another's sorrows and joys, and opening our homes to your indwelling. God in mercy, hear us as we pray. Father, we remember those who have asked for our prayers. Take their needs and provide for them. Take their wounds and heal them. Take their suffering and comfort them. In a few moments of quiet, we bring to mind those known to each one of us who particularly need to feel the touch of God at this present time. God in mercy, hear us as we pray. Father, we call to mind those who have died. May they know the welcoming of your love into eternal joy. God in mercy, hear us as we pray. Thank you, Holy God, for knowing our needs, even before we become aware of them ourselves. We pray that you will accept these our prayers as we join together in the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We close our worship from Singing the Faith, number 351, In Christ Alone. i 
Let us go together in the joyful hope of eternal life and in the brightness of the promise that God is with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.